Certainly the best. to you it is another edition first for the month of june 2022 60 minutes nigeria a current affairs program where we dissect national issues my name is ero sagunao welcoming you i have very distinguished guest with me today who will be dissecting the topic for this week's edition uh, we are talking about uh kobe uh cash inducement in our political uh, scene, politicking is on as Nigerians prepare for the 2023 general election. So how do we call cash inducement? How do we tackle these menace? And by inference, how do we also prevent voter apathy? So that's what we're looking at. Some persons believe that, oh, cash inducement seem to trigger massive participation in elections. I don't know how true that is, but there's a school of thought that holds on to that. But there's another school of thought that believes that the undoing of Nigeria has to do with cash inducement, that Nigeria could have been greater, that the electoral process in this country could have been better if that monster, cash inducement, was actually destroyed. It is believed that political leaders, election of political leaders, have been influenced by cash inducement during elections. And it's also believed that probably the voters could have made better choices, better decisions. But once there's cash inducement, they are swayed. And democracy, for so many years in Nigeria, Nigeria is yet to be catapulted to a higher pedestal in the community of nations. Don't forget what the late Nelson Mandela said, that Africa is looking up to Nigeria. If Nigeria gets it right, Africa will get it right. Let me introduce my guest. I have Dr. Apostle Elvis Agonaima. He is a very respected clergyman and a leader of congregation. Nice to have you with us today. Thank you for having me. We also have with us an ambassador of peace to the United Nations. Uh, Dr. Ambassador Amos Arelobi. Nice to have you with us today. God bless you. Uh, incidentally, uh, Dr. Amos Arelobi um, is also a politician, so he knows the political terrain very well, <laughs> as he'll be able to actually uh, give us his uh, thoughts, his opinions on this uh, topic. So, but let's start with um, Dr. Amos Arelobi, because he's a politician. Now, cash inducement. Politicking has started now. Yeah. The social media platforms are watch. We don't want to mention any name, don't want to mention the political party, but some candidates or some aspirants rather have been castigated for their alleged involvement in cash inducement, even of delegates. The social media is a watch. Now, previous elections. There are allegations of cash inducement. People being given money and showing evidence that, oh, I voted for social party, I voted for social candidate. Now, how do we tackle this problem? Thank you, my brother and my viewers out there. Yeah. By the grace of God, thank God, I've contested twice as a candidate. Okay. In this state, uh, in this state. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Candidate. yes 2016, correct. I contested under the Labour Party. Okay. 2020, I protested under Ashon People's Party, the APP. And even right there on the feed. Okay. Let, let me just start from the one 2020. Okay. Right there on the feed, you will see people, even your own followers, your own people, your family members, only few of them, they will tell you, ah, brother, this money, now God made money our own. And they will, the people, they will make you to understand that before they give you the balance, they'll promise you 20,000 naira, they will give you... The, 
deposit. They so say you must show them. And that is one thing we must call. That's one thing we must tackle. This is, let me not, I'm not just making words. These are facts that I was there. I have videos, videos of it. They will tell, even some officials will be there, security agent will be there. They won't do anything. Until the one that happened in my own local government, my own world, I stood my ground and said, ah, You people are there. I'm a candidate. This thing is not good. Whereby, after voting, they will show you who they voted for with their agent surrounding the, the ballot box. Then they will, mark, they will be nodding head, telling the other person, Yes, he, has, he did it well. Then go and collect your money. So when I stood my ground, I told them, This is wrong. They said, Oh, God, this is what we meant. Some of them told me, This is the nation. This is what we meant Nigeria to be. That this is the only way they can collect their money. I said, This is not how we can get it right. We should stop this money. Uh, politics. They say, ah, if they cannot get it now, there's no way they can get it again because the government or whoever comes in there, when it comes to power, he will neglect them. I said, no. Why can't you start for a while? They say, there's hunger in the land. Nobody's ready to make sacrifices. That is where we are getting it wrong. But if we are able to stand our ground, because you know, whoever brings money to induce you to say, take, buy, take, I'll give you this, I'll give you that. Once that person gets there, definitely, there will be different ball game altogether. So that is why we must stop it. That was, there's a case in Ghana. And I have the video. I would have sent it so I can play it. Where a politician, many of us have, have gotten the, the video already, where a, a political uh, candidate in a, in a constituency went to a bag of rice, want to give them, oh, you take this one. To vote. They said, no, they threw the bag back at that person. Say, no, we don't want. We want good governance. How wish that Nigeria can happen? It can play like that. If we can do things like that, then we know, yes, we are ready for a democratic system of government. If not, money will still rule politics. Thank you, uh, Dr. Mosare Lugbe, your opening remarks there. And you've been able to also um, uh, tell us uh, your own personal experience. I will most say on this program that the opinions uh, expressed by guests are uh, their personal opinions, does not reflect the uh, opinion of the station. Okay, so uh, Dr. Evis uh, Amanaima, uh, what's your take on this issue? Um, it's the, this cash inducement thing, you know, what's your take? Uh, thank you very much. <coughs> Viewers, God bless you. Yes. Talking about uh, uh, voters, a party, and okay. uh, cash inducement. You know, we are talking about uh, how to uh, stop it. Okay. Who is going to stop it? Is it the government? Because stopping it, covering it, you have, you have to start with the government. Mm -hmm. Because there are agencies that ought to be, you know, their responsibility, you know, center on making sure this thing does not happen. Now, a government where a phone, presidential phone was sold at 100 million. That is already to me cash, you know, it's already cash in judgment because there are a lot of persons who would have contested, but they don't have that funds. Are you getting me, sir? Mm. Now, the prayer we are not praying, the secret prayer we are not praying is God make these political parties make a mistake that will favor Nigerians. Is my prayer now. Let these political parties, whether PDP or APC or the rest of others, let them make a mistake in this forthcoming election. Let them make a mistake that will favor Nigerians. You know, if you look at the political terrain, they are, if, you know, the money that is involved now. Sir, if you want to talk about Corbyn cash inducement, yes. we, you know, let's start from this angle. I was expecting that we are going to have third force from the political terrain. For example, now, we have the uh, uh, the political party, you know, the current parties in yeah. power, and just, you know, we also have... Uh, Atiku has you know, emerged, a PDG, yes. Now, I was, was expecting, okay. I was expecting, yes. you know, other political parties, at least like seven, to merge. Okay. You know, when I see people talking on Facebook, on different social media platforms, oh, we support you, we support, I don't laugh at them. Sir, in this forthcoming election, from the way things are going, yes. it's going to be between two parties. Which two parties do you have? It's going to be between APC and PDP. It's okay. clear. Okay. You know, I, in, why am I saying this? Yes. Now, we have 774 local governments. Mm -hmm. 
Now, you are clapping for a man, for example, there's a man, I can't mention his name now because I'm not campaigning for anybody, yes. that me, I love him to be Nigeria president. Okay. But he came out from a political party that does not have a structure. In other words, a lot of us would not want to waste our vote. Are you getting that? Okay. Now, because, and that same man, sir, he has money. But I'm very sure, because of his pedigree and his, his foundation, he will not want to spend his money to bring that structure now. Now, assuming, you know, let's say one to five or six political parties, yeah. they merge. How was APC then was able to defeat PDP? There was a merge. I was expecting by now, you know, for a number of political party to make together, they will not have third force. Hmm. But as we speak now, because a political party now who can only control one state or two states, yes. you can't produce a president of Nigeria as we speak. What about if there's, if there's um, some kind of popular interest, sir, social migration. media, sir, mobilization? Sir, sir, sir. Let's, let, listen, you can have 20 million followers on Facebook on internet <laughs> is different from the reality. You can have 20 million followers and you can go out contest election, you might not even get to 100 voters. <laughs> it's true. Really? Guys, it has happened, yes. Yeah, it's true. Yes. You know, when you see people, sir, I am not a politician, yes. but I am in Nigerians, and by God's grace, I'm on ground, I know what happened. Okay. I'm not just only a brave with spiritual matters, I know what is happening socially. Okay. You get it now. now if by the time you know i was expecting maybe they can still take that decision okay now by the time we have thought force where we are now having apc pdp and a group of parties coming together now they cannot begin to start building structures yeah. because we have 774 local government because if you must win an election you must have structures if you must win a federal election, maybe the office of the president, you must have offices, have structures in all this world, in all the world, in all the local governments. Are you getting me now? Yes. That is where these two political parties have upper hand. Now, by the time you have structure in all these political, in all this world, in all the state, in all these local government, then when you are not preaching, let me let me say this out. Okay. Now. Listen, with the level of economic, our economic crisis, yes. with the level of hunger in the land, yes. sir, there's hardly a Nigeria now that they will give money you will not take. Huh. <laughs> there's hardly a Nigeria okay. that they will give money, except for some few, very few. Yes. Why? Because there is serious hunger in the land. Yes, true. There is serious, our economy is in dilemma. Hmm. Now, if we want to call you know, cash inducement. cash inducement. I believe it will start from forming a formidable call. The party should merge. So that if we are not saying, for example, if party A said we are not going to give money and you have forces, you have you have merge yes. and your party is everywhere, that will work. But if you are saying you are not going to give money, you are not sir, to even run the media aspect of uh, political whatever is expensive. <laughs> but that's legitimate spending. I understand. Yeah, there, there's always, um, there's always. Sir, this is what, I, what, what, what okay. I'm trying to say now. Okay. Sir, if somebody like Peter Obi, for example, okay, brings out 50 million to now begin to open offices on that Labour Party, he will run away. Sir, you have experience of this. Yeah, of course. Now, by the time, let's say seven political parties, yeah. they merge. Some of them already have offices before. Now they can create new one because now there is strength in unity, but you cannot do it alone. Mm. That's why my prayer now is I repeat myself again. Okay. Let the political party make a mistake that will favor Nigeria. <laughs> From what we are seeing now, yes. this election is between two parties, okay. APC and PDP. Okay. Except other political parties, they decide to merge. Maybe it can be seven of them, like I said before. Yes. But if we are going the way we are going now, it will be like a child's play. It will be between PDP and APC. Okay. Very, that's very, very emphatic from Dr. Evis Agonaima. Uh, he has actually cited something very, very credible on this program. And that uh, has to do with what he thought should have existed before now, a third first. He is of the opinion that the ruling APC and the major opposition uh, political party, the PDP, seem to have um, structures on the ground. And he believes that uh, that could be to their advantage. But you never can tell. 
A third force can emerge any time. We do not know who is the third force. Uh, there are so many uh, candidates now, so many aspirants. On the 6th of June 2022, the ruling APC party will have their national convention. And after that convention, then uh, a presidential candidate will emerge. Because there seems to be a focus on the presidential uh, aspect of this election. Um, every citizen is interested in who governs the country. Well, uh, Dr. Edmond Zare, yeah. you have said yeah, that cash inducement is really a menace and that uh, while politicking is going on now, there's also that problem of uh, cash inducement. But was it like that before now? And how this issue of cash inducement uh, actually uh, creeps into our politicking and political uh, process? Well, before I answer this, let me yes. add to what he, my brother just said. Okay. You see, most of the new political parties now, yes. right, even for my party, let me not mention my okay, party's name now, and some yes. other parties. Okay. We are all building structures from the world now. What he said concerning merging yes. for some parties, yes. like my party and other parties, to come together, it is possible. But though it has not happened, it is not over yet. It can still be possible. But there are different ideologies. A political party is supposed to be set up based on ideology. Or is it that our politicians don't believe in ideology? No. See, it is when they come together. How did APC come to be? Does AC and other people that came together, definitely the, the leaders, they will come together and work out modalities. Okay. Is it possible for us to do it? If one, Just as, as he said, we have a thought, we must have a stronger thought force. A strong, not just a strong thought force, a stronger thought force. A coalition where we can all come together and say yes with one mind and one purpose let's rescue nigeria let's redeem nigeria nigeria need to be rescued yes because somebody was telling me that nigeria if is nigeria need to be rescued <coughs> who kidnapped nigeria or who arrested nigeria listen you believe see don't just uh, pretend you know nigeria is not more the way it used to be nigeria some people will believe that nigeria is gone but I'm seeing that school of thought who still believe Nigeria can still be redeemed. Because if you are praying without action, it's nothing. If you don't get your PVC, if you don't go and register, if you don't belong to any political party, but definitely if you don't want to be a but you can still vote, but get your PVC. Have any and that hand? process is going on now. Yes, and how do you that? make a registration for a PVC still on. There are still some people, some certain Nigerians, yes. who still believe uh, if I don't want to waste my time. That is voter party. Voter party. They will tell you I don't want to waste my time. It's still the same old story. They will still ring it. They will say, but if you get your PVC, if you go and get your PVC, cast your vote, stand by it, it then let it be count. And not be said enough that for us to say, ah, that's as a dog. No. It's time for us to change the change. Because yes. there's a saying that say, change begins what with me. Mm. If we have this new ideology, this new mindset that let us take away money vote now. Mm. Let us not be induced by money. Let us vote with our clear mind and see how it will work. Mm. Thank you. Uh, doctor was itching to make a... Uh, 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 yes, I, I want to quickly comment on what uh, doctor said. Okay. You know, talking about uh, uh, voter party. Now, let me quickly say this. You know, I, I think a few days back, I was, trying, I was enlightening some persons okay. who was like, ah, they are not going to vote, they don't vote. And I told them, you know, they have that mindset that, you know, they will always write the result. I said, no. Okay. I said, what they do, they try to give you impression that they will do it. I said, do you know that? I said, if you, if, you know, for you to know that your vote is very important, yeah. how come they are buying it? Mm -hmm. I said, what they want to do is to create a, a scenario whereby you will feel that it's all over. If uh, they don't even need me, I said they need you. I said because once you are dead, there are things they want to perpetrate. They can't do it. Hmm. I said that's why they try to give you a signal that will push you away, so they can do what they want to do. Yes. I said, for example, even when somebody wants to ring election, hmm. it's easier when they are when it is just their side that is there. But if every other person is there to ring, it becomes difficult. Because difficult. I said two, you know. Having voters card is good, but it's not enough. It's not the end. Mm -hmm. Now, it's you too also knowing what you want. Because you can have your voters card and vote against yourself. That's another thing. I'm that doing. Yes. You know, somebody now can just go, you know, there are people who even want to go and vote that day. 
They don't even know what they are voting for. They don't even know what they are voting. And that's what I'm not, I'm, I'm not even communicating now. Yeah, you know, you are, you are, I should know what that, I want. That's the voter party stuff. People are yeah. not even, you know, they even know what's going on. They are not interested. They're not participating. Now, I feel, sorry to, say, of sorry to go to you. Because there are some elderly people. Because even, I, I use myself as a scenario. Yes. As a case study. Okay. There are some older uh, elderly people yes. who don't know who is who. But the person holding their hand will tell them, Mama, now this one you go do them. Now this one you go do them. People are telling them where to vote. They say, to, to them is, give me the money anywhere you want me to vote. I don't know who is who. <laughs> because development has not even gotten to them. They don't hear what is going on. Like in some communities now, there's no light. No so, electricity. No electricity. So how would they know who to vote for? Apart from you go, they see only one vehicle or one particular party come to that the locality. They see nine be any party. Nine you go go for with that slogan. And all they go there because they don't have anything. Uh, okay, you know, yeah. uh, just to add a gay, sir. Okay. You know, uh, talk, you know, outside the old people you talked about, sir, there are so many young people that don't even know what they want. Sometimes, sir, we are the problem ourselves. Mm. We are the problem ourselves so many times. Nigerians? Yes. Sir, the Nigeria problem is not created by an American. We created our problem ourselves. Do you know that sometimes, even outside that, we are on phone. We, do you know that these days, sometimes, social media have taken a lot away from us? Mm. I agree. That things that we need to know. Sometimes when you meet an American, a young American, he knows a lot about his country. But you know that a lot of us, so, sorry to use this word, some of us, we are big, but our brain, we are, we are empty. We don't even know what happened, what the government is supposed to do for us, what this particular leader, what we are expecting to do for us. That's why sometimes when we get to the field, we can be easily cajoled. We can be giving cover and we vote against ourselves. Yeah. You get it? Now, telling people to vote, to get the PVC is good, but it's also good. We should also tell them, enlighten them yeah. that now, as a citizen, do you know what you're supposed to be enjoying as a citizen? Mm -hmm. Now, until you know, sir, until you know where you are going, every other road becomes a road. If you don't know where you are going, for example, if you don't know the reason for this election, what this election is all about, what you are expecting from the people who should be fit in, who should fit in to provide what you need. You can go there that day, you still vote against yourself. Mm. Are you getting me now? Now, there are people you cannot cajole, even with your money. One, not because they are too good, but they know what they want. They know that this particular person does not have the capacity to provide leadership that will bring whatever we are, we, we, you know, the, the state needs. But a person that does not know all these things will still go to the field that day with the PVC and say, vote against his future. Thank you. See. Let me bring one, one single point okay. that most of us, we know. Some of this problem is being caused by some of our so-called leaders, whether religious leader, political leader, or whoever leader we can, can target. Now, if, for example, because it has happened to me, if I don't have money to give you, yeah. and he is a leader of a clan, mm. someone else will now come and give him money, say, look, tell your people, tell your followers yes. to vote for me. As soon as he speaks, my people, everybody, this is who we are voting for. Ignorantly, every one of them will keep behind and say, okay, we are voting for, that's what our leader said we should vote for. Yeah. When you know that that person cannot do better or cannot deliver or cannot give dividend of democracy just because they said you should vote for that person, you just go ahead and collect the money and vote. So these are the problems that everyone, just like I said, knowledge is powerful. If you know who you are, look at who you want, that, that pedigree, what you want to vote for. Who, you, who, which party, and the candidates they are bringing. If we can come with this mindset, ah, my leader said I should vote for A, and I know C is better. Yeah. Why not vote for that C that you believe that can rescue Nigeria, than voting for the A that everybody says, oh, because he has the money. There was a time in Edo State, let me not mention the name. Okay. There was a time in Edo State that we believe uh, rich man begin on the steel. <laughs> Okay. You're gonna get me now. Yes. But as time goes on, things went so many things went down. Yes. So let me stop there. Okay. But one thing we must understand yes. that when you know that if this man can deliver until each of my campaign, I'll use this word, until our leaders withdraw up a, 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 and take an oath that if I do this, this is what will happen. I'll be transparent, accountable. And make sure I'll be transparent and, and do whatever it is to make it right. If after 100 days in office or one year or two years, mm -hmm. nothing is being done, then take me out. Not until we learn to prosecute them. 
Let them be answerable to us. Nigeria will never be better. Thank you. Okay. Um, before my guests will continue uh, to dissect this topic that we have, uh, covering the voter party and, of course, uh, cash inducements in our electoral uh, system, uh, because politicking is on, and uh, already there are allegations of cash inducements, even of delegates, that some delegates are now richer than they were before the <laughs> convention of, of, of a particular political party. Maybe there could be others, but the social media seem to be awash with one. Okay, now my guests have continued to use the word rescue Nigeria. Now, I need to make you understand that it's not about Nigeria being kidnapped, it's not about Nigeria being head hosted. Uh, they are talking about the, econ the economic uh, woes of Nigeria, the downturn in uh, in Nigeria's economy, inflationary trend, uh, and so many anomalies um, bedeviling the country. We'll take a break now, and after this break, we'll come back and continue with the topic. Enjoy watching. Welcome back. It's always a delight to know that you're spending your 60 minutes with us on the program, 60 Minutes Nigeria. I hope you are enjoying the discussion. My guest, uh, Dr. Apostle Elvis Abonaima, and of course, uh, Dr. Ambassador Amos Arelumbe, uh, they are set to dissect this topic further. Now, some persons believe that without cash, nobody will be interested in politics. Some others say, no, let's call this cash inducement thing and allow people to just participate in politics, you know, without blemish. Okay, um, Apostle Elvis Sagulaino, you have said there's hunger in the land, and that once somebody is hungry, there is the temptation to be induced. Okay, now we are preparing for 2023. Conventions are going on, primaries are going on. Now, how do we actually ensure that credible Nigerians emerge. Thank you for that question. Okay. Number one, we all have to be involved. And we have to be at alert. Okay. In the Bible says we should be vigilant. Because once the people, the parties, political parties, discover that Nigerians are vigilant, they are careful who they present to us. And it's already happening gradually. Because the way Nigerians are so much interested in 2023 now, is giving a lot of party, political party fear now. Hmm. That's why they are careful now. Okay. Because they discovered that many Nigerians now are now involved, even those that were not speaking before are now speaking. Even if you look at uh, recently now, the way people have gone to, many youth, the way they have gone to uh, uh, re-register themselves, register themselves for, to get their PVC. You know, every day the turnout is very massive okay. and impressive. Yeah. That is already a sign that we are ready and it's already giving a, a, you know, a signal to the political party that you cannot just give us anybody now it must be somebody that has capacity mm. because nigeria is in a state where we need someone that has capacity this is no story some other somebody that you know that he can he should have a lot he has done before now and uh, i haven't said that another area again that I have said it before, but I was still going to say it again, okay. that we need to also, you know, plead with other political parties. We have too many political parties that are dormant in Nigeria. It's the only time of election we begin to hear about them. Now, greed should be, they, they, should, they should desist from greed, okay. you know, and decide. Many of them should come together. Let us have a thought force, you know, because by the time we have a strong and a formidable thought force, yes. That I think we can use that to fight, you know, cash inducement. Okay. Because by the time many political parties come together, that was what APC did then, that gave PDP at that time serious head, and they were pushed out. Yeah. Now, if we can still do that now, uh, like uh, doctor said that there's still time, you know, I think that should be what they should work on. Not that it, it must not be that must be a president, okay. you know. 
Uh, but what we should be aiming at now, collective force on how we can rescue and save Nigeria. Because Nigeria is bleeding because there is serious hunger in the land. Mm. You know, a lot of people now, even they are take home now, cannot take care of them. Truly. You know, if you know some people now, you know, those they we used to say pray for three square meal, for some people now to take one square meal a day is a problem. You get it, sir? You know, everything is increasing every day. Even if you go to the market to buy goods, you know, to buy, you know, things, it's not, it's not easy. Dollar is going up. You know, it's going up. You know, that's why for me, and we are ready, and I'm talking to people, and I know a lot of us are talking, yes. and, you know, we are still pleading for other political parties they should make so that it might not be all but let them make we have a lot of them that in their states they are they have force let them come together so that they can be able to map out the, the, the you know 774 local governments and also have good structure everywhere so that you know even those of us that are on, on, on the internet that should be the message we should be passing now you know structure 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 because this is you know, a very strong aspect of APC and PDP. They have structure. They have structure. Yeah. You know, if all that, the third force has structure, mm. even with that money, a lot can be done. Okay. Before I just let you go. Now, you're talking about structure, that political parties should have structure on the ground in different local governments. Yes, I subscribe to that. Um, you, you seem to be convincing us that uh, with structure, uh, that can actually curb uh, cash inducement. I want you to expand on that because some persons will not even participate in the in, in any election if they are not sure that you are going to give them money, whether structure or no structure. And that is what I'm trying to say now. Yes. Look at this, sir. Now, like I told you, I said from the way we are going now, mm. because PDP is ready to spend money, APC is ready to spend money, because they know that there is hunger in the land. It's true. They know that if they bring that money. Even though one or two will not take, many will take. Now, and the reason why some of these people will decide to go the other way around, they just look at it, well, I would have liked to vote for this man, but this man, if I even vote for him, I might end up wasting my vote because the structure, the party is not everywhere. Are you get what I'm saying now? Yeah. You know, the party is not everywhere. You know, some people, you know, they're intelligent. Oh, for me to just waste my vote, why don't I just decide? It's not like choosing between two devils, for example. You get it now. Now, but then you have, you know, you have auction, good auctions that you cannot choose. But by the time the auction is not favorable, for example, you discover that this party A, this party B, these two parties are corrupt. They have PLD corruption. You get it now? If you look at everything, to me, buy hundred, buy the form, presidential form for hundred million is already out of corruption. No, it's not because the political party involved has uh, addressed Nigerians that they needed to raise funds for sir, the party. If they, they don't want to go I'm coming, sir. Tap in hand, sir, sir, in an election sir, day. So sir. that party has already. With, with due respect, yes. that is their opinion. This yes. is my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. If they want to raise funds. It's just like a church. You want to have a beauty, a structure. You know, you, you can tell your member, I say, okay, we want to do this. There are people that love God. There are people that, that want the church, the things of God to be going on fine. They will, you know, just, it's the same thing as party. If they want to raise money, there are people that God has blessed. Outside those who have stolen, they can support the party. Now, doing that, you know, you know, you know, you know putting 100 million for a form, so me, sir, it's already an eyesore. Because there are people who have capacity, but they don't have the funds. Truth. It's yeah. true. They have capacity. They don't have the funds. Now, it's a sign of, you know, uh, you know disenfranchising some of Discouraging them. people yes. out of the race. Mm. Because there are people that even have that money. Because of how he got his money, he will not want to even use that money. You get it now. Now, that's what I was tell, tell, you know, talking about the thought force just now. Even if you have the best candidate, sir, you have the best candidate in a particular uh, party, you don't expect that party, that, that candidate, to just bring out his end hard money, you know, all the money he has labored for for years, and just begin to put into that party to be building structure. He cannot do it. No businessman will take that risk. But if you now discover that we are many, 
the you know the political party they are, you know, the collective effort this one is bringing this one is bringing small is not big and they can put it in order okay now thank you please uh, yes let me see ambassador please thank you okay you see the, let me tell you one bit of truth again you must understand that there are some people who are registered mm. with their strength they are bigger than all the political parties put together but they don't vote how do you mean now there are some certain classes of people they call themselves they are they are, they are believers but they say it's against their religion to vote they are more in number but when you ask them do you have a, they say yes they have pvc card just because the government won them i've met with them just because the government wants us to have it because they want to use it for other transactions and all, they'll go and take it. But when it comes to election day, they don't vote. And there are some also class of people who have it, who feel that going out to the feed is a waste of time. That my vote does not count, which we are preaching now, that your vote will count. Go there and vote. So not until every one of us come together to rescue Nigeria, to save Nigeria, say no, enough is enough. We are tired of this. We are tired of A and B. Now we want something else. Let's see for a change. Let us, all of us, go out and rescue Nigeria. Baba said, because a tree cannot make a forest. Nobody can do it alone. Just like as he said, to raise fund, there are people who will contribute. There are people who wants to re redeem Nigeria. There are people who are ready to say, whatever it takes, let me change the system. Let me change the, uh, the, the way things are going. But they are not encouraged. As soon as they want to come up with something, that's why you now see some forces coming to attack them, my friend. If you do this, your company all will be seized. Or this is this, you'll be asking for questions and all and all and all. Because of that fright, you will now say, okay, let me keep, keep calm. So that is why every one of us, both old and young, if you are tired of Nigeria, if you are happy with the way Nigeria is, you can do whatever you like. But if you know you are not happy with the way Nigeria is going, go and get your PVC and go and make sure you vote these people out of office and let a new era, a new dawn come to Nigeria. Uh, uh, Dr. Amos Arago will not accept that to the program. Uh, thank you. Uh, because I'm sorry. Yes, yes, thank you for that. Uh, this government, under President Mohamed Buhari, uh, some persons are uh, eulogizing the president. Some of us may have their own contrary views. So that's the way politics is. You know, you may, some persons will comment certain policies, some other persons may criticize certain policies. So gov governance is uh, that way. But looking at the body language of the president, and uh, it's clear now that not like what happened when uh, there was allegations of a top 10 beat by a particular <laughs> president. Uh, the body language of President Buhari and the public statements of President Buhari and statements credited to the presidency. The indication is that Mr. President will retire to Dara in Katsina State at the end of his tenure. We'll get a new president. So how do you think we should get a new president? Um, Dr. Apostle Ellis, I will get a new president. Uh, to our president, President Mohamed Bari, he's even tired. He's fed up. The truth must be said. I use his younger brother. <laughs> uh, from the signal. Body language. The body language. He's fed up of the country. He never knew it's like this. You know, you know sometimes when you are looking at things from outside, you know, sometimes we tell people, some people say, Pastor, they eat money. You become pastor now, so you come and eat the money. So that you will, you know, I was telling somebody, I said, when people even sow seed, for example, though this is out of it, yes. they sow seed, you know, for example, there's a spiritual case. You yes. think the people that you are going to go into that case will leave you. The powers, you know, you will eat everything now. You know, let me stop there. Yes. Now, <laughs> when they were busy campaigning, yes. they thought it was like, it was a child's play. You know, at least now they cannot see what Jonathan was facing. You know, at least uh, his uh, second tenure is about to round up. I know President Mama Bari is praying for that day to come so he can go because he's fed up. Okay, so how do we get no, no, a see, credible sorry. president for Nigeria? Buhari is not, this is no. not the first time being president. He was the military head of state. Yeah, uh, but can, he, can you just answer uh, that? Uh, okay. Now, how do we get it right? One, we have to be involved. Okay. We must agree that we have a problem. 
Because until you agree that there is a problem, you can never find a solution. Okay. We as Nigeria must agree. I said number one, we must get involved. Yeah. Like a doctor said, it is true that there are so many mostly spiritual leaders. Me, I vote. On the election day, I love seeing myself there, choosing my leader. Because if it doesn't affect me directly, it will affect me indirectly. Okay. Now, there are many spiritual leaders that don't go to vote who has millions and thousands of flocks. Yeah. I think we need to change from that. We must get involved. Yeah. Because uh, this government, we must be part of it. Mm -hmm. It's not all about praying. There's a time to pray. There's a time to vote. Mm -hmm. Now, this time, as we are praying, we must be ready to vote. We must get involved. We must agree that there's a problem. And we must check among all the people, the candidates, that the political parties will give to us. We shouldn't look at, look at money first. We should look at capacity. That is what we should look for now. Yeah. Not that it's from, it's from the north, it's from the south, it's from the west, it's from the east. I think what we should look at now first is capacity. Okay. If this person has the capacity to rescue Nigeria, we should forget about where he's coming from first. Because where we are now, you get it now. You know, there's a level you'll be so on, you know, when somebody's so, you know, uh, you, you know, you are so empty in your stomach. You don't care whether there is money in the soup. <laughs> you first of all have to satisfy yourself. Yes. Yes. At this stage, now, because of the level of problem we have everywhere in the area of security, in the area of economy, what we should be after now, first and foremost, is capacity. The, the candidate that have the capacity, you know, the political, political, uh, political will, yes. some are governor, are president, but they don't have the political will. The one that has the political will, the one that has the capacity, the one that, you know, has surrounded itself, because also look at that again. Okay. You know, a candidate can be good, but he might surround himself with wrong people. Who he listening to? Yeah, wrong counsel. You get it now? Now, we should look at those areas, then at the end, we should take a good decision for our future. Okay. We must be involved. That is how we are going to come out. Thank you. And I still remain to say that my prayer now is this, yes. that politicians, political parties should make a mistake that will favor Nigeria. Okay, thank you. Emo <laughs> um, Sare Lube, now, how do we get it right? Because... 2023, fast approach. Yes, just like what, in addition to what my brother just said. Okay. If you look at the pedigree, look at these people, look at the antecedents. We all, they, they will always come out and tell us who they, we know them. They are not ghosts, they are human beings. They, they stay in Nigeria. Now, first of all, look at, it's so sad to see that till now, also is on strike. Though the government are working on it, they are doing something about it. We want somebody that has Nigerians, the poor masses at heart. Somebody that cares for the people, not his own elite club or elite group, no. Somebody that wants to take away the suffering from the people, that wants to give the people bread and milk to eat. Not only granite alone, Angari. Bread, milk, tea, you know, Nigeria will be comfortable. Because if you agree with me, we all have it as a slogan that whatever goes up in Nigeria never comes down. But in some developed countries, if there's a price hike and the people are clamoring, no, we don't want it, they will listen to the people because they have the people at heart. They'll bring it down. But in Nigeria, it's not like so. It's not like that. They will tell you, ah, man, I know my people. They will, they will, they will, Nigeria, we are tough. We are so These are Nigerians do not hold their leaders accountable. Is that, is that the, what, the point you're trying to converse now? Yes. Okay. It's part of it. Because some of them will tell even because whoever is there does not go by himself to make sure to enforce, to make sure whatever decision his pronounce is making is being adhered to. Because there are some of them who will sit in their offices, they'll tell you, ah, do this and that. They'll come and tell you, ah, it is well done, well taken care of. This is what we should exist for. We want a leader that always go out, that always go and interact with the people, know the yearnings of the people, know what they want. Have the people at your heart because you are. We took out that you want to serve the people, not to govern, not to lead. You want to serve. It's a duty to serve until our leader, that whoever is going to come up, to see himself as a servant, as a public servant, not as a leader 
or a dictator, then we will not come out of it. Yeah, while you were talking, uh, Dr. Ebo Saradugwe, I was smiling because you said, oh, we need a lead. We need somebody uh, who will mix up with the people, who will go out, you know. You know, before election, because you are a politician, <laughs> yeah. I don't know whether you do that, yeah, but yeah. before yes. uh, any election, we see our leaders, they will uh, go to the streets, it into gone. the masses, you know, interact with the masses, some of them will feed children, some will be chewing maize, um, roasted uh, <laughs> corn. You know, we've seen that. Some will just do things with the masses and just to make you believe, it's a make-believe thing, to make you believe that, oh, we are with the people. And at the end of the day, they turn around. Okay, let me so tell you something. that's why you were talking, Wait. I was smiling. Now, yes. Sorry if I will use this man as an example because don't mention the no because he's somebody that we've seen his pedigree he has done it he no, don't mention he has it. acted on it but that's why I said because <laughs> this is somebody yes. who abolished those long of entourage government and wastage he said no it's too it's too much why if he's going on foreign a, a trip he said no he doesn't want to use the government money he wants to use his own money these are the kind of uh, pedigree I'm talking about okay. he doesn't want to use public fund. And after his tenure as a governor, he was the first person, the only one in Nigeria for now, that went to the EFCC, which is, go on, come and check me. Hmm. That is a record. He didn't go with enterprise. He went there with himself. Look, with my taxes, everything. Check. How many of our former governors, how many of our presidents can be bold to do that? We've seen how the EFCC forcefully arrested a former governor. Okay. They have to force Did he go by himself? the house. Into his Did he didn't go to the office by himself. That. So, okay, maybe some Nigerians begin to heed what you said and, and they willingly submit themselves to EFCC, ICPC. Maybe we'll see that. But, um, Apostle, we're gradually coming to the end of today's show. Now, the monster is there. And you have made your point very, very um, explicit that there's hunger in the land. Are you not saying that this cash inducement in the elections cannot be solved? Are we going to continue that way? Even in primaries, the allegations now of cash inducement, you know, because it starts from the political parties. If you get it wrong from the political party, the masses have no choice, the voters have no choice, the persons you present are the people they will vote for. How do we get it right? Your final comments on that. Uh, this part is clear. Okay that when a politician is sharing money is a sign that he will come to do nothing and even though he decides not to do anything mm. you can't hold him accountable if you like pray against him your prayer might not be answered because he has paid for it it is true that's true that's why all these politicians with a lot of persons have been causing them the cause does not reach them because before he got that position, he has spent money. He has paid for it. We must know as masses, as Nigerians, that if anybody decides to go and borrow money or decide to carry his money or his friend decide to give him money and is not sharing, once he entered the office, he must first of all recover. You know, and at that time, he's not interested in us. He's interested in his money pay back. They have to pay back. Because there are many banks that I won't give them loan. Mm. Now, therefore, we as Nigerians, we must advise ourselves. Since we have been collecting money, we are the result. Therefore, I think this coming election, it shouldn't be about money. It should be about capacity. That should be, you know, we can stop it. It is we that will stop it. Because I hear some people, you know, sometimes some people, like I said, if you like, curse them, pray against them. It will only work if they are not, if they are guilty. A man who has shared billions, millions, sir, no curse will work against that man, <laughs> except from different sources. Okay. That's why this, all these politicians, they are getting richer. Many of them are getting richer. Because why? Before they got what the position they are, they know what they pay. Because there are many of us who take advantage of it. You know, you want to collect money, even some house of God. You know, we have to be careful. We have to be careful. You know, my final take is, 
Nigerians, we should open our eyes. We should be vigilant. This is not a time to collect money. This is a time to look for capacity. Thank you very much. Your closing remarks. Just like I said before, yeah. open your eyes very well. Don't, this money, is, let us stop it. We can stop it so that we can have good candidates. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Okay, that's the show for this week. If you enjoyed 60 Minutes Nigeria this week, keep a date with me next week. By God's grace, we'll be here again with uh, a new set of uh, guests to dissect another national issue. My name is Ewo Sagbala. Bye-bye.